Hey, Armin here. Welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. Where we cover training, nutrition, supplementation strategies, and a whole lot more. So stand by. <music> Hey, and welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. I'm Armin Eckelbarger. Hey, I'm Frank Mills. Welcome back. We've been gone a couple of weeks. Um, stuff yeah. happening, guys. So I uh, hope everybody is well. But today's show is an exciting one, and I think a very helpful one for <laughs> everyone. Uh, we're going to be talking about how we deal with adversity regarding your goals or maybe yeah. whatever else you got going on, right? Uh, we're going to talk about a lot about that. Also, we've got some fan questions. And, you know, Armin, uh, we've had a couple weeks off, and we've been dealing with a lot of adversity ourselves. But welcome yeah. back to the show. Uh, I missed doing the show the last couple of weeks. But uh, does this have anything to do, this topic today, of uh, Hurricane Adalia and uh, what happened with your home being flooded? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things where, um, you know, I'm glad to be back, first and foremost, but at the same time, uh, it, was, uh, it was quite a challenge, and I don't really recommend anybody having to go through, um, you know, a flooded house. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, so just to confirm here, yeah, I I, I, sure. I know that you live on the water, uh, but yeah. the the actual issue with the house and the flooding was that from the Hurricane Adalia? Yeah, it was. I mean, <clears throat> what really got us was the uh, the surge. It came from the pushing the water around, and so that's what caused the flooding. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. and um, you know, our house was built in 1975, so you know, it had some. You know, it was built on on a seven foot elevation as they would call it but over time you know things change and so the house actually flooded back in 1993 and then it flooded again in 2016 which we didn't really know about that until after we closed on the house but then you know we had to decide okay are we going to not take the house or are we going to take the house my wife really liked the house and so uh, you know it has a lot of features to it and so we thought okay we'll just go ahead and, and we're going to gamble on it. We, we were able to get flood insurance. So as long as we have it insured and we also had homeowners insurance. So, but <clears throat> when you have a flood, unless you have wind damage from a hurricane, you know, you don't, you only have, you don't get both insurance policies actually paying you. So we had to learn all the details of that, but so there was no wind damage. So we got nothing on the homeowners insurance, but so all the, everything fell under the flood insurance, which had you know a lot of limitations to it. So, but at the end of the day, it's better than nothing. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm sure this did cause a lot of adversity for you. I mean, you work <laughs> from home. So that yeah. really threw a, a, a wrench in everything. But what exactly happened to your house from the flooding? So when the surge, the surge was ranging from 6 to 12 feet, it was going to come into the area. Um, and I think because of the high tide, which actually adds a couple more feet of water, yeah. um, I think the surge is probably like nine feet or something like that. So anyways, with us, we ended up getting just <laughs> under two feet of water in the entire house. So everything, you know, two feet and below was basically destroyed, uh, which, uh, you know, sucked. Uh, luckily, though, you know, Kim and I and the dogs, um, we were able to stay at her brother's house, which was about 40, 40 minutes away in Inverness. Inverness, Florida. And so we stayed there during the storm, uh, which was good because otherwise we'd be sitting in a flooded house, you know, which wouldn't be good. Right. And then uh, he was also out of town. He was, he was staying in Indiana. So and we were able to stay there until we could kind of figure out our situation. Uh, but you know, what we had to do though, is we, we're not planning on staying there long term because their, her, her brother's son was also living there. So we didn't want to live with oh. him either. And I'm sure he didn't want to live with us, so then we had to <laughs> we had to find right. a place to rent pretty quickly uh, because you know the the house was livable, and so um, because of that, 
you know, we're reevaluating what we're going to do. But at this point, I think we're just going to rebuild and um, not necessarily repair the house, but just tear it down and build it up so that it's uh, flood proof. But now we're dealing with insurance and the FEMA mm -hmm. uh, as part of that. So there's uh, still a lot of unknowns, but that's what we're leaning towards having done. <laughs> well, you know, Armin, I, I, I guess, first of all, I'm sorry to hear about all this. Uh, I, I know a lot of yeah. people in this state of Florida, among with other places in the country, have dealt with hurricane winds, wind damage, the yeah. flooding. Um, it, it most definitely sounds like a lot of adversity, both mentally yeah. and physically. You're doing a lot of different things, but what was going through your mind through all this? Well, in the beginning, uh, you know, 8 a.m. that morning, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 everything was still fine. But the one neighbor next door, he stayed there. He's 65, 66 years old. He wasn't going to leave no matter what, which I wouldn't recommend that because his house is on the same level as ours. He stayed there. And so, he, you know, I talked to him at 8 o'clock. He said, oh, everything's okay right now. And the water's up, but it's, it's, it's normal, no, normal with where it was at. And then... Uh, and then he texted about an hour later. He goes, "All right, it's it's going to be bad because the water just started coming in." And then uh, that's when it this continuously came in. So um, it really uh, was like, okay, thought I was going to get away with it because uh, you know we've had like multiple scares over the last two years where you know storm can come in and cause this problem, and we've been lucky enough to not have to deal with it. Well, you know the, our luck ran out, so that's what happened. So. With this going on, you know, my mind is just like, okay, how are we going to deal with this? And so you really don't know the impact of this until you actually start dealing with it. Uh, so it was like, all right, at, at this point in time, me and my wife talked about it. We're just going to take it one thing at a time, you know, one step at a time, one day at a time. And then <clears throat> we're going to see, you know, where we're going to, you know, how we're going to rebuild or what we're going to do here. And then I decided since it was, you know, pretty unpredictable because you don't know, you know, I've never dealt with this, that I would just take some time off from training. And then what I'm doing, uh, and I thought, well, I'll just, you know, any things that wasn't fully recovered will get recovered. Uh, so I decided to take a, uh, you know, a little bit more time off, which I haven't really done in a long period of time. So that was my strategy of dealing with it. So that would take some stress off of there. Uh, but then my whole schedule was totally out of whack. So, cause I, you know, there's the food was ruined. I had no food and, you know, the sleep was not good because of, you know, all the changing environments. So, you know, every day was pretty much an exhausting process because it's hot out and it's really humid. And then we're trying to move all this damaged furniture and everything else out to the road. Cause that's what you're required to do to get rid of it. Cause it's full, you know, salt water and all kinds of, uh, you know, elements that come from the ocean. And right. then, uh, so, you know, with that, and, and on top of all this, hauling this out the rain, it starts raining on, on all, on everything as, as part of it. So uh, it was an absolute miserable process, um, dealing with it. And so, you know, so what you, uh, uh you know, when, after that, we kind of learned that, you, you know, after you take the, all your things that you need to get rid of out of the house, you also need to start taking off the sheetrock of the house, you know, to start letting it dry out. And this is a preparation if you're just going to repair everything. So we started doing that. And then there was a wake up call. Um, Cause you know, initially my wife thought, well, we'll go in, we'll mop all this up and, you know, let it air out. And this will, you know, we'll figure out where it's coming from there. But each day <laughs> as you're in this situation, it gets worse and worse because the smell, you know, I mean, you got, Salt water. It smells like a bait shop in a nutshell um, from all the, you know, all the <laughs> elements. Right. And so, right. you know, it doesn't really air out very quickly. You know, you, you, they put the, the AC at 65 and you're just trying to figure out, okay, well, what can we control? And it, it, it's not something you can fix really quick. So that was apparent. And then the reality, we started cutting the sheetrock and tearing it off the walls. And that is a, that is a hard process too. I mean, yeah. So, the reality was going, okay, um, this is going to be a lot tougher than I ever thought. Um, so we just had to like, all right, we're probably uh, not going to do all this work just to 
with with, with the current situation. So it was uh, it was quite a mess. I don't, you know, and I had, we have other people on the street who had the same situation. So it was bad for a lot of people. Wow, wow. Well, <laughs> I, I I I know that had to have been very mentally tough on you doing all those different changes from your normal routine. I'm sure a lot of people wondering, you know, I, I know you said you took some time off to, re, you know, to let your body recover. Did you try to train at all any time after some of these things that happened? Uh, is that something you were able to do? Uh, no, it was pretty intense. So, I mean, this is like a full scale emergency kind of situation. So, uh -huh. you know, this is, I was like, okay. And they're trying to figure out, okay, when, when will things even be halfway normal? So you just don't know. Right. So like the, you know, the next, I guess for about eight days, I was just dealing with the environment and, you know, doing what I can to get, you know, the wife was stressed out and yeah. we had some people helping us, but you know, it's just, it was just a, an unknown. So I was definitely missing the gym, but I also, at the, my, you know, as I'm doing all this, my energy levels were good in the beginning because I was, you know, in great shit you know, good shape. But as each day went by and the lack of sleep and not eating on, on my typical schedule, you know, things started getting worse, um, mm -hmm. you know, because during this process, we lost two refrigerators and the freezer. And these things, what happens is when they flood, they float. And so, you know, Ugh. one refrigerator would be flat on its back and you got to lift it up and you got stuff everywhere. And then another one was at, a, at an angle, which we had to try to figure out how to move it because it was full. I mean, it full of water, too. So, uh again this is a, an experience that you uh, have no idea of what you're going to do uh day to day so we we did have water we you know and other supplies but uh, trying to get this house cleaned up was becoming an enormous task and again it wasn't just us we had neighbors other neighbors in the same situation and we're all just trying to you know okay what do we do for this what do we do for that communicate with each other but yeah it was it was it's bad <laughs> Well, you know, it, it, it most definitely sounds pretty tough. Um, you know, I, I mean, you were basically really displaced then, correct? Is that the case? Yeah, that's, that's what basically happens. Yeah. Because I mean, you can't, it's not livable with, I mean, you, you could live there if you wanted, but you know, I had no beds. And so, cause we had to get rid of them cause they were soaked with the salt water. So, then when you could sleep there was to get something temporary and then you got to deal with the smell. It was just not, it was just not livable period. So, right, right. Um, you know, so you know, for us, um, you know, we were lucky to have a place to go to. And so, but after we were there, we realized, okay, we're going to have to find a place to live. And then, so, and then, then figure out what the next steps could be after that. So it was either, and after that we had to decide, okay, are we going to do any further repair of this damage or just let that go? And, uh, you know, and here's the thing is if we decided to re repair the damage, which would take, again, several weeks or months, depending on how quickly you can get it fixed, then the other thing was like, well, this could happen again. It's already happened three times. How many times do you want to keep doing this? And so that's when we started deciding, okay, we're going to have to probably, we're going to, we're going to look to see what it costs to rebuild and get the home up in the air. So it would no longer be a problem. And that would improve the value of the home anyways. But what, what this entails, though, is tearing down the home and then rebuilding, period. You can't um, can't just raise it up from where it's at based on the current codes. So we'd already learned that. So we're investigating all the costs of you know, moving the home up in the air so that no longer no is a flood issue. Because the houses that I, on the street that I live in that were elevated had no problem. I mean, those people left. You know, they didn't want to stay there for the storm. They come home, maybe rinsed out the garage, and they were good to go. They're out there washing their car. We're out here moving furniture and all this garbage and stuff out of the house. So, you know, that's that's the reality of if you're in a hmm. floodplain and your house is is low to the ground. So, <laughs> but it's, wow. it's a gamble that we decided to take when we bought the house, and we thought we might be able to beat the odds, but not happening. <laughs> well, you kind of alluded to you're in Inverness. You're displaced. Yeah. Where things are. Where actually are things right now at this point with you, Armin? Yeah, so we're trying to find a place to rent, and luckily we we did find a place and found a place in, in Inverness. I mean, 
it's 40 minutes away, which is not ideal, but when you have all these people being displaced like this, there was no place to rent. And then we have two dogs that doesn't help when you're trying to find a place to rent either. So right. it was pretty stressful on that. Um, but we did find a place finally. I mean, we took a one year lease because if we're going to rebuild, they're going to need to, you know, it's going to be a lot longer prior to a year to get everything put in place. So we did that. And then uh, and during this time, I had to find another place to train. And luckily, there was uh, another any type of fitness that, you know, I could just go to instead of, because you know, I won't be able to go to the one I normally go to. Um, so that's what I did there. And with that being said, I, I am pretty amazed, though, how poorly outfitted most of these gyms are i mean it's just it's really disappointing uh these these owners they, they just put in bare minimum to me anyway they put in bare minimum equipment selections and i mean i don't think anybody understands it that they make calf equipment They're, they do make calf equipment you can put that in the gym but they don't have any of that you know i mean it's just it's just ridiculous but mm -hmm. uh, i was just like all right well but you got to make the best of it so now, at this point, I'm back to training regularly and, you know, things are snapping right back into place. But um, uh, it, it'll be another week or two before I start getting back to where I was at, just be, based on recovering everything. Else. Right. Well, it, it probably was pretty weird for you. Like you're used <laughs> to going to the gym all the time. All of a sudden you're not going. Um, <laughs> yeah. Was it was it hard to get back in the swing of things and, at, you know, really did you have a strategy to get back into the gym? I mean, that, that's a long time to take off, right? Well, again, for me, I, you know, I've been training for 40 years. So I've had other issues in the past okay. that I had to deal with. So you, you kind of figure out how to make your comeback, so to speak. And, you know, a, an eight day to 10 day layoff is not a big deal. It's just that, you know, when you start back, that's the thing. So, you know, when I start back on anything at this point, from years of experience of doing this over and over and over. I used to get sick a lot when I was younger and that always caused me a lot of setbacks. I had sinus issues yeah. all the time, yeah. but um, I always, I made decisions on how I want to do it. And so my logical strategy is always start back training my, uh, my weakest body part. And so in my opinion, that's my legs. And so I start back with that. Uh, and so since I'm in tune with how I train and, and how my body feels, uh, which is, Stuff that happens over time as you train a lot. So I wasn't too worried about anything other than just going back in and just deciding what I'm going to do. Um, but I, I could tell that the layoff and the stress from all the things I was dealing with had affected my stress or my strength and the conditioning level. So I was fatiguing a lot quicker than the normal. And so these first few workouts, I just kept them pretty short uh, mm -hmm. just to, because I could tell that, you know, it was affecting me. So the one thing is, is, you know, you're more sensitive, which isn't a bad thing, but uh, it's a good thing I did, didn't really go my normal self, which I, you don't want to anyway. But if I did, I mean, I got really sore just doing just what I did. And, but that's one of the things that people also deal with is that when you take a layoff, the fear of the soreness. Well, I knew I was mm -hmm. going to get sore, but, you know, I'm, I'm used to that. So the one right. thing I will say, though, is when you do these kind of things, uh, because your body is starting back kind of fresh, the pump you get is pretty interesting. I mean, you get a really good pump. So the body snaps right back because muscle mm. muscle has memory. So that's one of the benefits um, as well. So that's how you can recover and get back to where you're at a lot quicker. <laughs> well, considering the flooding, what about your nutrition and your supplements? I mean, how did that affect you over this time? <laughs> Well, that was, that was tough. That was a mess. Uh, so I ended up having to eat out a little bit more than what we typically would, but I, you know, I know how to work around that. So that was okay. It's just more expensive. So we incurred a lot of expenses during this process. And then, you know, uh, I had some supplements that they got, they got trashed from the, from the, you know, the, the flooding. So, uh, I had to reorder more of those, but I had some that I had saved. So I was able to kind of, but they were kind of scattered everywhere. So that took a little <laughs> while to get that back under control, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, if you go right, for right. time without taking supplements, it's not a big deal, but, um, you know, this week, you know, we moved in last Saturday. So this week's been the, the best week, uh, since we've kind of got a little more situated and I had to get a new desk, a new chair, and you know, I got all that stuff in place. And then, uh, you know, 
we got some groceries, so I'm starting to get back to our normal normal eating schedule, uh, which is nice. But um, it, it's far from where it needs to be, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it yeah, it kind of sounds like you're bouncing back. You're getting back into the swing of yeah. things. Um, has this altered your plans for the future? What do you have in store now? Yeah, so right now, we're, again, we're looking to rent for probably a year or more because we don't know how, we have no idea what's going to be involved with the uh, the rebuilding process or if we, in the last minute, decide we're just going to fix it up and sell the property. You know, I mean, anything can happen, but that's kind of where it's at right now. I mean, we are leaning toward just having the, the house tore down and just rebuilt just because that would solve a lot of problems and we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. But you know, now I have to adapt this new location, which, um, you know, the dogs are confused and this and that. So it's just, it's like anything you have to make the best of it. Um, but you know, it is what it is, uh, workouts, nutrition, supplementation. I mean, I'm back on track with that. So, you know, that's all good news. It's just, um, uh, it's just not your, it, it, it's going to be a few more weeks for I even have one, one ounce of stability as far as, cause I'm still unpacking stuff they're still dealing i gotta do my taxes yet because i did file an extension i mean and some of those documents got lost you know so that that adds a little more stress <laughs> wow it, it is a lot um <laughs> well I'm, I'm glad you're you know starting to get back on track and things are getting into some sense of normal again but yeah. you know as we wrap up the segment you know the adversity part armin you went through a lot of it and you, you have the mental toughness from your workouts, from your training. I'm sure that helped you a lot. Um, as we wrap up the segment, any final thoughts about adversity, how this helped you or how your training helped you get through it? Well, I think what's helped the most is just my past experience and knowing that, okay, you know, there's going to be a setback here. It's just try to, you know, minimize the setback best right. I can, which is what I've done. So I would say when you have a situation and things are basically upside down, uh, you, you got to keep your head about yourself and keep things more, less stressful because it can, it can overwhelm you pretty quickly. If you got a lot of head trash, it happens with all this because you don't know what's, what's going to happen. So do things hour by hour, day by day to slowly get back and take back control of the situation that way you can manage that stress and, uh, you know, have a clear head day to day. So you, you need to get a lot of sleep, in my opinion, you need to get good recovery. So I would definitely do that because, you know, th this is very stressful. Um, and I know other people have been through similar situations, uh, which, you know, which could be even worse. I mean, you got people in Hawaii, you know, they got this fire situation from high winds. I mean, there's just all kinds of things that happen in, in the life. So, uh, but I definitely have an appreciation for people that deal with these kind of things. Like, uh, cause I mean, you need to reassess daily on how you're going to adapt to what you're dealing with and, and just where you can to slowly get things where they're consistent again, so that you can get that schedule and fight through what needs to get done and then keep moving forward so that you can stay focused on your goals. Now your goals will have some setback, but, this stuff happens. And so you, you have no choice, but to deal with it. Uh, but again, it needs, you need to keep that mental toughness and then focus on what you know works from the past. And then I know it works from the past. So uh, I was able to get my training nutrition and things snap back into place pretty quickly, but uh, that's, that's what I would say. Well, a lot of great information. Um, We've got a little bit more coming up in the second part of our show to kind of piggyback on this stuff. But, you know, Armin, I uh, appreciate you sharing everything with us. Glad that you're okay. Your family's okay. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah. you know, this is episode 99. So next week, 100 <laughs> shows. I, I'm just kind of blown yeah. away uh, about how fast things have progressed. But, Glad that you're healthy. Glad that you're good. And uh, let's keep pumping these shows out, right? Yeah. yeah we are. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, stand by for a quick word from NSP Nutrition and Armin, and I will be right back.
Hey, and welcome back to the NSP Nutrition Show. Hey, uh, guys, you know, Armin and I, we've been talking about a lot of different things. This is normally the part where we do the fan questions, but I thought it'd be kind of helpful to kind of piggyback uh, on the first uh, segment about the adversity uh, thing. We, we all go through adversity. We all have our own different types of adversity. And a lot of times your mind will talk you out of things, whether it's good nutrition, working out, getting good night's sleep. Uh, you talk yourself out of things. When you go through real adversity, like what Armin went through or what other people have went through, it's 10 times harder. And Armin, I, I, I was curious, do, do you have any thoughts of considering what you went through and what you know now, is there anything that you could have done different, been more prepared, ha have things in order a little differently to where it would have helped your situation? Or do you think that it just, it, it is what it is? Well, uh, you know, you can always try to do more, but when you got 22 inches of water, you know, even if you elevate things and, you know, as many as you can, uh, the water soaks up into everything. I mean, the beds were up, but not high enough. So the water just soaked into the beds. I mean, you know, anything that's wooden, the furniture, uh, it's going to expand and warp. And, you know, so all that stuff just takes its toll. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we did sandbags. Sandbags are worthless. You know, yeah. you might as well just, you know, not even bother. It just doesn't make any difference. Right. So, right. Which I wish I would have actually known that ahead of time because I've moved sandbags now like I think three or four times. But it, that is, I got 40, 50, 40, 50 sandbags that I had to move, which are, these are heavy sandbags. So they're like 60, 70 pounds a piece. And then when they're soaked with water in a flood, they're real fun to move after that. So. <laughs> Right. So right. as far as preparation, the best thing to, for me, the preparation would be raise the house. <laughs> that, right. That's the only right. thing that would have made sense because everybody had a raised house in my neighborhood. They were fine. I mean, they, uh, you know, some people had pools that were raised up and they were fine. Right. And I had a right. neighbor next door that has a pool and he wasn't raised up and it, it turned black. So, you know, he's, he's dealing with that headache. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, there's all kinds of things. So as far as preparedness, you know, I guess the best thing for us is we had a place to go to so we can mm -hmm. weather out the storm. Uh, and so that was probably the best move we made. But other than that, I mean, there's, I don't think there's a whole lot that uh, could have been done. I mean, I took yeah. my boat off the lift and put it on the trailer. Luckily, the water didn't come up any higher because the boat could have floated off the trailer, which would be another problem. But that would have been covered under insurance. But it tore up my lift a little bit, so I'm having that repaired uh, just because of, you know, how that storm affected everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of stuff. I, I think that, that uh, you know, because I've lived in Florida my whole life, and I, I know that hurricanes are not just really partial to Florida, but we get a lot of them compared to other places. But, you know, we've heard about them hitting in the New Orleans area, that was a bad hurricane that they oh, yeah. hit yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I hammered that. Yeah. You had others that have hit Texas, uh, up on the other side of the state, up near Jacksonville and Georgia, the Carolinas. We seem to get a lot of hurricane activity, storm activity, tropical storms. Um, you know, for the things that I think of is a lot of people don't take these storms as seriously and I think a lot of it is when you watch like the Weather Channel, they they sensationalize it to where, yeah, they scare you into trying to take you seriously. But like 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 it's hard to believe them because when something doesn't happen, you go, oh yeah, right, whatever. But mm -hmm. you know, you're you're proof that this storm surge stuff is, is no joke. And and I think the one thing that that I do that might help. Um, is to prepare to leave, like have a to-go bag uh, or a to-go yeah. box, right? Uh, well, we, we know, did I, that. I, yeah, we loaded yeah. that stuff up, but it, you can only do so much of that. You take with you. Right. So, but we had, you know, like, 
we had, you know, some of the important documents we took with us, but, you know, the, the best preparedness though, in my opinion, is to make sure it's flood proof and hurricane proof. So if you're going to, if you're going to live in those conditions, to me, that's what you need to do. And then you'll have minimal damage. You also, your, your insurance will be cheaper. Right, um, right. So, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good points to it. So, uh, and luckily for us, we'd have some finances that we can work through this. But if we were tight on finances, it would be, uh, you know, we just bet we'd have to just do what we could to then patch things up and probably just sell the property and move on right, in our situation. Right. So, yeah. Well, we'll cross our fingers for you, Armin. Uh, like I said, I look forward to doing the shows with you. But, you know, in regards to adversity as a whole, um, everybody deals with their own different kinds of adversity. And, and I think your approach to handle one thing at a time, uh, one day at a time is really the perfect strategy. Because if you start thinking of 20 different things all at once, you're just going to ruin your day. Right. <laughs> I mean, well, that, that still happens. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah. you still have these things. Like what about this? What about that? But then you've got to like, okay, well make write some stuff down. And right. break it down right. but then okay what's the immediate thing that needs to get addressed and then they start tackling that and then you know you just go through that checklist one thing at a time but you know each hour there could be two two more things added to the checklist that weren't thought about so that's why you have to right. kind of keep that that head trash under control and no matter what you do you're still gonna have head trash it's still gonna affect you but you're just right. trying to manage it so your stress isn't you know beyond what it needs to be to you know, get through it. Well, again, I'm glad you're okay. And if any of you experienced adversity from the hurricane, uh, yeah. our, our thoughts are with you as well. I, I mean, hang in there, but it's how you rebound from stuff, how you get back up from adversity, yeah. uh, you know, is what's important. So we'll be back next week with another show. Please go ahead and share the show with your friends and family. Yeah. Uh, you can share that by the QR R code over our heads. You can email any questions or comments to support at NSP Nutrition or comment on YouTube channel. And join Armin and I next week for a brand new episode 100 of the NSP Nutrition Show. Hey, thanks for checking out the NSP show. Go to nspnutrition.com where you can find a whole heap of resources to help you achieve stunning definition and eye-popping levels of muscularity. Don't forget you can save 10% on your first order by using the code NSP show at the checkout. Catch you next time.